A huge part of why I picked Generate Blocks as my primary builder is because of the performance you get out of the box. It doesn't take a whole lot of extra work to get 90 or above on PageSpeed Insight scores. But what started as just four simple little blocks has suddenly become eight with the upcoming release of the tabs and accordion blocks. So I got to wondering about what kind of effect this is going to have on the performance of Generate Blocks moving forward. So today, we're going to test that. We're going to see exactly what happens to our pages when we add an accordion and when we add tabs. We're also going to compare that against some of the other block builders on the market. So if you're performance conscious like me, then stick around and let's get started. Writing a proposal sucks, but the easy peasy proposal, it can help you end your proposal procrastination for good. It's the same fill in the blank style template I use in my agency, and it will help you create winning proposals in minutes, not hours. Learn more by going to theadminbar.com forward slash EPP and use the code YouTube for 30% off at checkout. To test the performance implications of these two new blocks, I've set up a couple different tests for us to look at. I'm not gonna bore you through setting up all the pages and running all the tests. I've already done all that, but I'm gonna show you exactly what I did and what the scores came out as. What I ended up doing was creating a page using a new tabs block or a new accordions block, and then a companion page that we would use as a benchmark that has the pages laid out without those items. We'll go over each one of these before we dive into the test and we'll see exactly what kind of difference it makes in terms of page request and total page size. So first up, let's take a look at the tabs block. I have the tabs set up in this test number one. So first we have the new blocks and the old way. So to give you an idea of what I did, here is the page set up with the new tabs block. Here we have our bronze package, we can tab to the silver package, and tab over to the gold package. Now I purposely made these pages as simple as I could with just text and buttons, because I don't want other things like images or videos clouding up exactly what's happening in terms of performance. Now for the companion page we're gonna use as a benchmark, I just did a simple three column layout. Both of these pages have the same exact amount of headlines and buttons. I decided to run all these tests using GT metrics. Even though page speed insights is something I'm usually more concerned with, GT metrics gives us more granular data. So here's the things I was really concerned about. The total page size and the total page request. Of course, fully loaded time is important, but if you've done these tests before, you know that you could run these two or three times and get a different number every time. So for the first benchmark, we have the alternate layout for the tabs. This is the one that's just using the three column layout with headings and buttons. The total page size is 37.7 kilobytes and it has a total of nine requests. When we compare this to the one using the actual tabs block, the page size went up to 39 and the total request went up one. Funny enough, the fully loaded time was actually a little bit shorter. Here's a look at both of the tests side by side. We can see the page size only went up just a hair over a kilobyte, and the total page requests, of course, just went up one. If we dig in here to the waterfall report, we can see the one request that was added was the tabs.js file, which is only 806 bytes. So as far as I'm concerned, adding a tabs block to your page really isn't gonna affect the performance at all. But let's see if that's the same story with the accordions block. For the accordions block, I decided to use an FAQ section, which is something you'll frequently see an accordion block used for. So here we have a headline, a subheadline, and then six different items inside the accordion. Of course, for the benchmark test, I used all the same blocks except stripped out the accordion and just have all the text on the page, which is typically what I'm doing since I didn't have access to an accordions block in Generate Blocks previously. When we take a look at the benchmark test, we can see that the total page size is 37.5 kilobytes and there's nine requests. And with the accordions block on the page, we go up to 39.6 kilobytes with 10 requests. Again, just going up one request and about a kilobyte in total page size. Here you can see the two tests side by side. On the left, we have the benchmark and on the right, we have the accordions tab. Again, if we scroll down here to the waterfall, we can see the accordion JS file, which is our additional request, and it's at 0.98 kilobytes. So again, adding the accordion block really isn't gonna add any load time to your website. This of course is all really good news, but I really didn't expect Generate Blocks to add something that would really damage the performance of their plugin. But Generate Blocks doesn't exist in a vacuum. This really doesn't tell us how it compares to anything else on the market. So I decided to set up both of these pages using Generate Press's biggest competitor, Cadence. 
They have an accordions block and a tabs block that work in a very similar way, so let's see how generate blocks implementation stacks up against cadence. Going back to the tabs block, on the left hand side you can see the scores that we had previously for generate blocks. 39 kilobytes in total page size and 10 requests. Using the cadence tabs block, we actually come up to 76 kilobytes in total page size and 13 requests. Obviously, that's a pretty decent jump inside of total page size and three more requests than what Generate Blocks has. Here for the accordion block, we can see Generate Blocks on the left with Cadence on the right. Cadence actually fared a little bit closer in this one to Generate Blocks, only going up a few kilobytes and only one more request than Generate Blocks. And just to be clear, I'm not taking a shot at Cadence here. Cadence is extremely lightweight and capable of giving you great performance scores. So if you're already using Cadence, this video should really have no bearing on how you feel about that. These differences in the grand scheme of things are actually pretty small. I just needed to be able to see how Generate Blocks compared to something else. Just for fun, I dropped a single Elementor headline on a page and you could honestly stick all the blocks from Cadence and Generate Blocks on a page and still have less page size and less requests than what you have from a single headline in Elementor. I know we went through all of this stuff quickly and you didn't really get to dive into all the nitty gritty details. So I've gone ahead and made a blog post that covers all of this in a whole lot more detail. There you can see screenshots of all the tests and you can even download the full PDF reports by GT Metrics. I also have all the pages I created live so you can go test those for yourself and see what kind of scores you come up with. I definitely wanna make sure I'm being transparent here. So I guess when it comes to the new additions to Generate Blocks, we really don't have anything to worry about. If you'd like to see some more content on Generate Blocks, I have a couple videos popping up here. And if you enjoyed this content, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you're not already. We'll catch you in the next one.